Okay, so okay. my name is yes, Eugenia, please. and uh, I'm a banking and fintech professional with over 10 years experience in the finance sector. And so this evening we'll be discussing emerging tech, fintech, and um, the focus will be on blockchain. And so if you have any questions as we go along, if you have any questions, you can just stop me along the way and then ask the question, then we can move ahead, okay? Okay, so... I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay. All right. So emerging technologies are um, impacting every industry now. And the um, examples of the emerging technologies we have at the moment, we call them the ABC, um, ABCD of um, emerging technologies, where A stands for artificial intelligence, B, blockchain, C, cybersecurity, and cloud computing. D, data science, and then we have internet of things. Aside the financial service industry, um, they are providing amazing benefits in health tech, in edu tech, legal tech, entertainment, manufacturing and supply chain, but also decentralized identity. Yes, and yes, um, of course, they are imparting financial um, sector as well. So let's talk about FinTech and how they are in, um, impacting finance, okay? So FinTech basically refers to the integration of technology into offerings by financial service companies in order to improve their use and service delivery to consumers, okay? So we'll be focusing on blockchain tonight because of all the emerging technologies um, at the moment, blockchain is the most, well, maybe complicated and controversial because it really disrupts um, the, the, the financial sector compared to the other emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, cybersecurity and data science. Blockchain is the most controversial and, compli and the complicated one of all the emerging technologies, okay. All right, so um, years ago and even to date, most of the traditional financial organizations core infrastructure to store data and provide network to systems is the server, right? The problem associated with existing systems are a single point of failure, high cost, low security, lack of transparency, and low trust because data can be tempered with. So let's have a scenario. Eh? Let's say, I hope I'm audible, right? Yes, you yes. are. Okay, so let me give you this scenario. If you want to, you want to transfer funds to another bank in US, mm -hmm. for a global bank like Sanchez, HSBC and all those banks, and um, it needs to go through, Sanchez for instance has to go through Sanchez US before it gets a beneficiary. For a local bank like GCB, the funds needs to go through a correspondent bank or an intermediary before it gets to the beneficiary. So this makes cross-border payments, for example, very, very expensive due to intermediaries involved. It could be one or two intermediaries. It also takes longer for beneficiary to receive the funds. Sometimes days, sometimes hours, it's not real time. And also there are um, FS risks involved. Let's say you transfer $1,000 to US today and it's going to get there in two to um, two days. What happens is if the dollar rate changes, as we have now at the moment, dollar rate changes every day. Before the beneficiary gets the, the rate would have changed, and the that cost, will, the um, remitter has to bear that cost. Okay, and also um, security issues. Um, so I'm talking about the challenges associated with the legacy system or the existing systems that we have now. We have security vulnerabilities which enable hackers to target centralized service and hack a transaction. We also have lack of transparency, okay? So looking at all these challenges, and um, blockchain infrastructure comes in with a lot of promises, okay? So one of the benefits of blockchain infrastructure is the first one is, is cost efficient because we don't have, we don't need intermediaries. There are no intermediaries needed. Um, it's also very fast 
to process, unlike um, legacy infrastructure, the security is high because the security is um, high security because of the traceability and immutability features. And also the security pro pro protocols in every blockchain are quite high. So it's difficult for hackers to get access to these problems, um, these platforms um, easily. Since expansions on a decentralized model, it's quite impossible for a hacker to track down and hack a user's account. So hackers find it difficult to penetrate the system and steal money. And so can easily offer, um, and because of this, it can easily offer high security for digital transactions, okay? Then blockchain infrastructure, another benefit is the transparency is very, very high due to its traceability and because it's, it has traceable and immutable ledger and there's no single point of failure. So in short, blockchain technology has security, immutability, transparency, traceability, and trust to any and all transactions, okay? And it makes the world a connected place and level, and also levels the playing field for everyone because it's decentralized, okay? So at this point, do you have any questions? None from me. Okay. Okay, so all right. So to recap, um, fintech provides lots of benefits to all stakeholders in the ecosystem. Okay, um, legacy fintech infrastructure is on the centralized network. That's the server server that we all hear about. That is Web two. Mm. But um. This emerging technologies that we are, we, are, we are talking about, the blockchain and DLT are, um, are on web, web three, okay? Blockchain and other distributed ledger technologies disrupting, they are disrupting fintech infrastructure and they are, they are known as um, web three. So the web actually evolved from web one. Web one was in the nineties, myself, I don't really, really remember. If I came to the evolution of the internet, when Web One started, Web One was just read only, and then we came to Web Two. Web Two is read and write. Web Two is what we currently have at the moment. I mean, that's what we are experiencing now. All these centralized um, infrastructures we have, all these social media, centralized social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, they are all Web Two. Some of these e-commerce, uh, AliExpress, all of them Web Two. Web two. Even your um your organization website is web two. They are all web two. All this that we are currently at. so for web three, we are now evolving to web three. Okay, and then the web three is still is still new. It's still nascent. Okay, they are currently in the, like independent, and so um developers are now bringing it together. So that's the next evolution of the internet from web one to web two to web three. And then web one, I think I don't really remember if I I experienced web, but I call it web one. Web one is just read only. So that one, just information available, just read. When it goes onto the internet, all you do is read, 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 read. We didn't have the option to uh, maybe um, write. As you know, for instance, if you go to Facebook, after reading someone's post, you can respond. You can write and respond. So that, that is web two. But the interface for the web one wasn't like that. Uh, web one, some, something like if you go to Wikipedia or not, you can just read and read, but you can never respond. It wasn't read and write. Just read, read keep on reading information and consume information, but you can also send in your feedback. But web two, as you are reading, you can, you can always also add your point of view. That's why we have the, all these social media for people, Twitter, everybody putting in their feedback because the evolution of the, the web two, allows us to put in our feedback to whatever we read. Uh -huh. So for the web three, web three is an enhancement of web two, which is um, you read, you write, and you can own. So let me explain what they mean by own. Own means, you know, currently, eh, all these social media, this Facebook that we have, eh, um, they track most of our, our data. 
without our, they track our data without our consent. So for instance, for instance if there's any uh, um, election coming on, they can track people's data and all that and sell them to research companies. They sell them to government, they, whatever they want to sell it, they just track without our consent. They don't ask permission from us, but they track all those data and sell it out. Especially this, um, e-commerce platform they can track people's behavior they know that maybe you go to amazon amazon a lot of people are, are buying this product more than this particular product a lot of people are buying a particular product it's, it's, it's a research it's, it's a kind of information they have about human behavior why are they buying this particular? and all that research people companies come uh, consult them for those information to be able to also develop their products if there's a product that they, they are People are buying more. People get all that information and also come out with. And even the, those companies themselves, they use those data to even manufacture their own product. If Amazon knows that they are buying these products more, they can also form a, a, they can also produce that kind of product and compete with, I mean, the vendor selling that product. So all that they, they track, they use artificial intelligence to trust all those 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 data. The reason being, um, let me give you another. Um, at least that will make you understand it more. When you go to, when you always, when you go to Google, for instance, I mean, some of the things I search on Google, most of them are about fintech. Sometimes when it comes to women, women, natural hairstyles and all those. So sometimes when I go to Google, automatically those things pop up. Even though sometimes I haven't even searched, they pop, they pop up because they've been tracking me. They know that things are like, so they, they track my, they, they, they've already tracked. So they track, um, they've already tracked my behavior on the internet. And so they give me what I, am, I would love to um, read about. Okay. All right. So that's how the Web 2 is. And so the Web 3 that I'm talking about, the Web 3 that we are now, um, we are now moving towards it. For Web 3, if you want to track somebody's data, their own, the read one, we know the, the right, we know because that's what we are experienced. But the own is when um all these centralized infrastructures all these social media they and if anybody wants to track your, take information from you they need to ask permission because you own your own data they need to ask permission the infrastructure is such that if someone wants to take any data from you and said the person needs to ask permission from you for you to give your consent and even you can even strike a percentage if you want to sell my data to a research company percentages i'll take 80 percent you take 20 percent because at the end of the day you may you are making money from me so you are going to Facebook, you are browsing on Facebook, you feel this Facebook, oh, the platform is free, we only did internet. The what you are getting from you is your data. You are selling it all around. Mm -hmm. So when you're going to all those platforms, you think, oh, all I need is internet, Facebook and all those social media. The, what they also get on the other side, the profit they make from you, the, the data they are selling. So Web3 gives you the right to own your data and give your approval or consent to anybody who wants to, who want to, whether they want to sell your, whatever they want to do with your data, they need to ask permission from you. They need, you need to give them your approval. And even you can, as I said, you can decide to give them, um, you can decide to give them your condition that, well, if you want to take this data, I'm taking either 50, 50, you take 50%, whatever money you are going to make out of it, you take 50, I also take 50, or I'll take 80, you take 20. I'll take 70, take 30, you, you own it. So you decide what you want to do with it. Okay. So Web3 technology are decentralized, distributed and peer-to-peer -peer network. So with the four main pillars of Web3, we have uh, one blockchain. Blockchain is the tech infrastructure. The base, the foundation is the blockchain of the Web3. We have tokens. That's the currency. That's why people talk about this crypto and all that. Well, it's not just crypto. We have stable coins, we have tokens. We have NFT. So let's say, like, let's say that the NFT are, uh, let's say it could be the goods, depending on the kind of infrastructure or the kind of environment. Sometimes it could be the goods, sometimes it could be, you don't know, depending on, you can even, the best certificate can even be NFT. So depending on who is using, using uh, it at the moment, depending on the industry, your best certificate can be tokenized into an NFT. Your university degree, university certificate, this university uh, issue, um, how do you call it? University certificate, they can authenticate it on NFT so that anywhere you go, you know, most of these organizations, 
uh, when they employ you, they want to, they will ask you to go and take reference on all that. If your university has issued your certificate on an NFT, they just have to, I mean, authenticate it. They don't have to even go to um, the university for the, for the, for the, how do you call it, for the reference on all that. There's a way to authenticate to see if the certificate is genuine using um, NFT, NFTs. Yeah, a lot of uh, things can be tokenized, okay? The, so that the NFT is, is mainly, is, you know, that's non-fungible tokens. It's mainly for unique assets, unique assets, okay? Which are not, um, okay, I don't want to go deep, so let's take it, let's take it like that here. And then another pillar for Web3, you have the DA, the, the decentralized autonomous organizations. They are the communities. And we have Metaverse. Metaverse is like the, the interface. So let me go by the four main pillars of Web3. Blockchain is the, the foundation, the tech infrastructure. The front end is the tokens where we have the stable coin, crypto, crypto, crypto assets. We have NFT, that's the, like the front end. We have decentralized autonomous organizations. That's the communities. And we have the metaverse, that's the interface or the experience, the metaverse, okay. Blockchain, for instance, um, blockchain, for instance, blockchain is a cure to most of Africans' inefficiencies like high corruption rates, high inflation, cross-border payments, land fraud, and any other type of fraud, okay. okay. So in Ghana, for instance, if we decide to, um, we decide to, Puts most of our, our data on a blockchain. We will, will solve problems like high uh, um, corruption um, problem because what whoever tampers with the data, data on on the blockchain ledger is immutable. When I say immutable, it means that uh, it cannot be tampered with. Okay, what we can do, unlike database, now we have right now. If you have a database on a server, if you want to change something, you just have to update. If I, if I have 25,000, I can just amend to 50, uh, maybe 10,000. And that's why I just update. But on a blockchain, you cannot update. You have to add on. So you, it will be another line on the ledger. It shows that it's, um, and this thing has been amended from uh, 25,000 to, to 10,000. But then you cannot, the 25 you cannot, currently, you, it, it, when you do such amendment, you don't have any, any, how do you call it, anything to be able to trace or track that this person did this amendment. No. Okay. But on the, on the blockchain, it, you, it, it can trace to your identity that, yes, you did, you changed this thing to this. So if you have this government finances on a blockchain, of course, anybody who tempers with government money, even after 20 years, we can still track you. We know that you, you used, you took you this money and you need to justify what was useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the tokens that I talked about already, which is also another main pillar of web three, they're actually the basis of the digital, digital economy, okay? So token can serve as anything from value or, um, from value and a stick, even a voting right can be a token, okay? So as the world becomes increasingly digital, the next natural step in the evolution of money is digital money. That's why most, um, that's why most central banks are also coming up with um, central bank digital currency, okay? Even the main reason for this CBD is the central bank digital currency, okay? For them to take over, the, for the digital money, post-COVID, we have gotten there. By looking at how things were turned up, the crypto community and all that, I mean, they were, they were leading this transition. So because of that, that's why the central bank also came in, started all this post-COVID, all this central bank, everybody's coming up with central bank digital currency. Because if you don't do that, then it means that private companies and these crypto companies, uh, communities are going to take in charge, they are going to um, lead this transition and they're going to be in charge of all the digital money stuff, okay? So digital money is a natural evolution, it's a natural progression in the evolution of money, okay? Okay. 
Okay. So I've talked for 30 minutes. Is there anything else you want to know with regards to block or anything I said and you didn't understand? Hi there. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I have a question, please. Um, okay. So with regards to actually breaking into the uh, industry of blockchain, what type of job roles um, are specific to blockchain within the tech sector, please? Okay. The job roles, eh, they're just a lot that I need to, if you are really interested, I need to get everything for, but what I have off head, eh, if you don't want to be, at the back end, as in a developer, there are other things like community management, like um, projects, blockchain projects. We have NFT. A minute, if you can give me a few minutes, a minute. I, I think I wrote this somewhere. They're just, they're just sure. um, a lot. Eh? Mm, sure, I guess a lot. You. I need to write. I just, just a lot. A minute. Let me see if I can get this. I found it very interesting though. Um, I have had experience with the blockchain and cryptocurrency as someone who invests in projects, but mm. I've recently become more interested in finding more, finding out more about the tech side. So I am currently on a coding boot camp. Um, I want to also explore the other areas available, which is why okay. I come up with things like this. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let me see. I mean, it's, there's this um, blockchain. I mean, it, let me see if. Okay, so you could have um, enterprise um, blockchain experts or public blockchain. You know, we, are, we have different kinds of blockchain. We have the enterprise, we have the public, we have um, uh, maybe a smart contract developer. We have, um, oh. yes, we have smart contract. We have um, DeFi, decentralized finance. I don't know if you've heard of DeFi. Yes, I know. Decentralized. You can go to DeFi, decentralized finance. You can go to NFTs. You can go to. That's a lot that I can just. Yes, I think NFT this is where that maybe I can go and research these roles. Yes, yes. Yeah. Please, thank you. It's a lot that if you need that, I can, I can just put all together for you. Yeah, just. <laughs> Just a lot. Sometimes I just I I even get confused which one is best. You have decentralized autonomous organization um expert. The decentralized autonomous organized organization is. Let me try to explain it a bit. Yeah. DAO. DAO, yeah. Yeah, DAO. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I'm yes. familiar with that. You oh okay. If you're familiar, then 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 that's fine. Then that's fine. You know this um staking yield farming. And what again? Um, and what again? Staking, yield farming, and is it pool something something pool, liquidity pool, and all that? Okay. So if if you are familiar, they are just similar to they are parallel to what is happening in the traditional finance, mostly about investing and lending. They are they para the other side of investing and lending, but this one is at the digital assets side. You know, at the traditional finance, they use fiat physical funds. So this one is the using digital assets for similar things, yeah. for investing and then lending. Okay, all right, so if you get that one, that's fine. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll just do some more research as I can see that there's a lot of roles available. So thank oh, you. For the roles, for the roles. Metaverse. The, like, the roles are such that they are not, Web3 itself is so, so broad. So you can't master everything. So you, you need to maybe specialize in one that you're interested. If you're interested in Metaverse, you go the Metaverse way. If you're in, interested in decentralized autonomous organization, fine. When it comes to tokens, even the tokens itself, we have the tokens as the maybe crypto stable coin or you can go to the nft side nft itself do is so so broad or you go to the the infrastructure so that the blockchain where you get the smart contracts and all that you get yeah. it so depending yeah. on the organization you know Sorry. the use cases are a lot so depending on the organization you find it not every organization will need all the use cases so it's depending on the industry you find yourself that will determine where you would like to specialize, you get it. If it comes to something like entertainment, for the entertainment, obviously, metaverse, A1, it's about and maybe tokens, you get it. Uh -huh. So depending on where you want to specialize, the industry you want to go into, that would determine what you should specialize, okay? okay. And even, can you imagine that even traditional financing, mm -hmm. talk about traditional, when I'm talking traditional finance, right now, how many banks are in the metaverse? I don't know if you've been following the news. How no, many banks? Traditional banks oh. are in the metaverse. About, I don't know if you've been following the news. More yes. than five. Yeah. Um, JP, JP Morgan is in the metaverse. HSBC, Fidelity. Wow. Uh, Standard Chartered Bank. I mean, the banks in the metaverse, even the traditional banks themselves, they have a replica in the, in the metaverse, the metaverse now. So you can imagine how this thing is, is moving. Okay. And you know, it's going to be like um it's going to be like you know in web two now if do you know of any company eh, which doesn't really have like a website or anything currently on web no. two web two website is is also on web two that's centralized every organization website is centralized for its own is there any company which doesn't have a presence in web two like if you don't have a presence you don't have a website in web two who doesn't have a website? Majority, I would say 90% of companies, even solopreneurs, not a solopreneurs, like individual companies, all these coaches, coaches on the internet, they all have their website. How much more uh, like big, big companies? So that's how the Web3, they also went one presence in the Web3. That's why they are all going to the them service and all that. They need a presence in the Web3 because as it's coming together, you need presence. Okay, you need presence in Web3. At least first mover advantage can help a bit. Hmm. That's why they are all pushing, they are all pushing for pres presence. And even some are also, also some are also using it for branding and marketing. I mean to show that yes, yeah, they know what's happening in the world. <laughs> you get it. Uh -huh. Yeah, use it for hmm. cloud. Thank you so yeah. much. That really opened my mind to the possibilities of what to look at. So thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi, Eugenia. Yeah, hello. Okay, so maybe for um someone who is still in school, right? Mm. Probably studying computer science. Uh -huh. Who might be watching this and then um is not quite sure where to even start from. Uh. What would you advise that they like they, they start with? Okay, so um, I think if you are in, in school, maybe you need, to, you need to experience, you know, when you are specializing, you are going in depth, but if you experience maybe the basis of each, the one which you have more interest in, then maybe you, you, you um, continue with that one, okay? Okay. I wouldn't say because all this I'm talking about, you can go really in depth. You can you can just start with maybe just normal. If you are starting about normal blockchain basics, eh, something like the tokens and NFTs, they, they will definitely be part. But if you want to, if you I mean learn the basics, the basics will consist of all this, just the basis of it. But 
as you are learning, maybe the one that you have more interested in, you'll be more, you have more interest in. And you can, you can, you can continue with that one. And then also, hmm. also, there are a lot of certified courses in it now, okay? A lot of certifications, okay? So you can, maybe you can also start with certified blockchain. If you are certified blockchain, you are not in, maybe in depth in NFTs and all that, but it's like a general, you know about, I mean, the basis of all what's happening in blockchain, you get it. If you're certified normal blockchain, you know what is happening in all the areas. But then as I'm saying, as I said earlier on, they are in depth like certified metaverse, certified NFTs and all that. I mean, blockchain like, it's like covers all, all of them. So maybe you can start with maybe certif normal certified blockchain. Yes, normal certified blockchain, okay. Uh -huh. With a normal certified blockchain, if you enter a particular industry and they need more of metaverse and all that, I mean, you can just, if you have the normal blockchain certification, it opens you up. You have the basic understanding. That alone is enough, okay? As I'm speaking to you, I don't have any anything, any certification in metaverse and, and the, uh, the central, but I've done the normal blockchain one and it opens, me, it opens up all these other things. Because if, if someone knows that you're certified, blockchain, whatever. That one alone knows that you, you know what's happening in that space, okay? And then very, later on, we can go deeper. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much for sharing that. Okay. Uh, currently, currently, I know in Ghana, most of the universities, I don't know of any university which offers this um, like blockchain, full blockchain certified course in Ghana here. All the ones I know are foreign universities, yes, but they are certified courses that you can do alongside. Most, some of them are online. Yes, most certified oh. courses that you can do, mm -hmm. you can do al alongside, yes. yes. Okay, so currently in Ghana, Academic City offers a bachelor's in artificial intelligence. Oh, okay, okay, and okay. That's, yeah. and oh, they do artificial intelligence. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Is it's, it only um, artificial intelligence? Um, yeah, so they, they have, there's a, a bachelor's in computer science, there's one in IT, and then there's one in artificial intelligence. Okay. Okay, mm. I've heard of academic city. Where is it located in Ghana? I've heard that, but I don't know where it's located. Where is it located? Okay, it's um is a boshe. It's not so far from um transitions at Hacho. Oh, that's why it is Hacho. Yes, no, so it's not at Hacho, it's um mm. is a boshe. Yes, but um literally, so from transitions you Take the right mm. and then you go down. You see the um, new oh, and beautiful campus. I see. Yeah, so is that the affair? Um, or oh, they have other campus somewhere? No, so this um this is now the permanent campus. So oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I'll be hearing it all over, but I've been wondering uh, where is this school? Where is this university? Okay, I see. Okay, mm okay. I so the, the first batch is yet to graduate. I think they are in 200 now. Oh. As you know, the first batch for the artificial intelligence. Okay, okay, um, okay. Are yet to okay. That's nice. For artificial intelligence, yes, we do artificial intelligence with robotics now. It's very, I know it's very good. Yes, yeah, so then there is a bachelor's in robotics as robotics, well. Robotics, yes. Artificial intelligence in robotics is, is, is so, so good now. Okay, that's fine. For well, um for the emerging tech yeah, right now is every industry is I mean it's impacting every industry okay it's impacting every industry and what is happening now is every industry to want to embrace it because if you don't embrace it you'll be left behind if you don't embrace it now it's just disrupting all the industries that you don't embrace it and then try and just distract yourself. <laughs> you just have to distract yourself and then either you distract yourself or you die or your company will die. That, that, that's all. So most people, 
whether in the health health center and um, health tech or supply chain entertainment way. Mm -hmm. To see, we initially when this metaverse came, I was thinking this metaverse will be for all those, those um, maybe enter most, mostly for the entertainment and all that. And I didn't even know banks will enter the metaverse that soon. And even this beginning of this, the year, I, occasionally I write articles and then post them very short. I, I, I don't have much time. So I write very short, short articles and post them on LinkedIn. Eh? Beginning of the year, my the second article was on metaverse, the impact of metaverse on um, financial institutions. Okay, because I'm a banker, I just I just I just wrote that, and it was a very short, just five points. At the time I wrote it in January, I published it on LinkedIn in January, the second week in January. At that time, there was no bank in the metaverse. It was something that I think I thought it could happen maybe in the next four or five years. I just wrote it. Immediately, I, I published that article the following month in February. That's when the first bank, JP Morgan, launched in the metaverse. So I was like, ah, this thing that I wrote, I was thinking maybe in the next four or five years that's going to happen. I just published that this is what might happen in fi the financial sector. Banks will have presence there, but maybe later on, because if websites, everybody has a website, that's how the website is going to be. Everybody needs present there, okay? With your own link, and then you go just the way you are you're able to um, access to most companies' website. You want to go visit a, a lunch, a bank, a bank, a lunch for products and services. This is how it's going to support that. When I published that in February, the first bank, uh, JP Morgan, launched in the metaverse. The following month, uh, that was um, March, HSBC launched in the metaverse. Then um, around April, Standard Chartered Bank, but what is happening is, even though they are in the metaverse, it's not, it's currently not for the Africa markets. Singapore, UK, US, they, they are, you know, the, those markets, the Asian markets and the, um, the other markets, but currently not in Africa. But we definitely, we definitely get there very soon because most of these global banks, best practices, they implement it there before they bring it to the African markets, you get it. Uh -huh. And one major thing that is impacting the African market is regulation. What is happening? The central banks themselves, then, they regulated, they don't understand emerging technology. They are now learning it. You get it. So if they don't really understand it, they are now learning it, then regulation is going to be slow. That's why they always say innovation is moving faster than regulation. Because the innovation has come. It is there. When the, the regulator is himself or himself, that doesn't even understand. They don't understand it. How would they regulate it? You get it. Uh -huh. So they are yet to understand all this thing and come up with regulation. That's why the African market has a, a bit delayed in all this. But in other markets, oh, they are doing so so well in Web three. So so they've I mean they've gone even some banks. H um JP Morgan for instance has is offering a uh, DeFi decentralized finance products in their bank currently. Mm -hmm. Do you think there will be a web four? Oh, it's too Ooh. early. Ooh. I think it's too early, but the Web3 themselves, the Web3 is too nascent. I mean, in Ghana, how many people know about Web3? How many people? Well, the Apple Gen Z, they are wild. Because if you look at the students, university students, how they are wild about this Web3 crypto and stuff like that. And people are curious. So Web3, well, Web4 wouldn't be now. It would take some time. You know, since we have we had this Web2, Web2 started in... Which your face Facebook is 10 years, right? Facebook were some of the first companies which Facebook is more than 10 years, oh yeah, Facebook is more than 10 years. Uh-huh. So for two alone, we've experienced it for, to, for, for like 10 to 15 years. Okay. So we're three now that okay, people we all in the um, in other markets in other countries, UAU, UAU, Switzerland. Switzerland is, is doing so well in the crypto and then web three markets. Countries which are doing so well, Switzerland is doing so well, um, Japan is doing so well, China is doing so well, UAU, 
Um, Netherlands is doing so well. Oh, countries, Belgium, UK is also doing so well. Even their new president has even come, has even spoken about how he wants UK to be a, a crypto hub or whatever. <laughs> we don't know how he's going to work towards that anyway. But um, other countries are doing so, so well in the Web3 space because the, you know, the token economy is going to be going to be a very big economy because the thing about the token economy is that you see the web two economy what the web two economy did to us is that they took whatever you know it's like they took over the market i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say facebook for instance how do you call it you call it this um, first mover advantage if somebody comes out with another facebook do you think you will leave your facebook that all your friends are there to a new facebook Will you be comfortable? No. Me, for instance, somebody told me about I, about three years ago, four years ago, I was told that um, WhatsApp is the privacy is whatever, the security is is is, is too bad. And so there's this new uh, messaging platform. I logged onto the messaging platform. All my friends were not there. Well, who, who will I send send text on a, a way that unless I call all my friends to install that new messaging platform, you get it before it will be profitable to use it. So I came back to my WhatsApp because that's what all my friends do. You get it. But the sad thing is, the sad thing is because it, they, were, they were the first move, movers in that, in that field. So they've captured that particular market anyway. But then when people, it's about education and awareness. Eh? Like as we are discussing with, 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 with two or three now, we are, we are getting to know the, the advantages and the, and the problems associated with all these things. The part, the only, the bad thing is that they are taking our data, they are selling their data, and they are making money from us. So today, if someone comes, that fine. I also I also have this social media platform. Fine, the money that I'm making, we will share. Instead of me taking, you know, that's what that's what has made all Mark Zuckerberg and all these, all these. That's what has, that's what has made them filthy rich. They, they made it from us. They made that money from us. So someone comes to tell you that, so yes, I'm also coming up with a, a, maybe a social media like a similar to Facebook or similar to, and I'm going to, the money I'm making will be 50 50. I'll take up and I'll give it to you. Won't you go to that one? That's the Web3 one. You understand? Yeah. That's the only thing, the own part. You know that, yes, whatever the person is taking from me. You say it's about education. People get to know that, oh, yes. So this is what people are doing. So then in Web3, when in a, if you have a social media in Web3, eh, you can't do that. You can't be stealing people's data. No. You, have to, you need their consent. I mean, it's, it's such a way that you need to ask permission from them. So if, if there's a social media in Web3 or there's any Web3, you can't, you can't mess around. You can't make money from somebody. No. It's such that Either I give you the permission to do, or if I, it, it's such that you pay the money, I give you a, con, a, a condition that we have to share. I mean, you have, you are in control. You, the person that they are taking the, the, the data for, you are in control. Unlike Web2, that we are all there. Facebook is free. If you think it's free, we are just logging in. They are, they are taking all, they, they are doing all that. We don't even know that they are doing this behind our backs. That is it. Uh -huh. So it's all about education and people are, well, people are getting to know all this. So Web3, for instance, you can't, you can't, you can't play, play around people's data and do all that thing in Web3. No, you can't do that. So as time goes on, as we say, people also become more intelligent. As they become more intelligent, I mean, people will be migrating and go where they think they are safe or go where they also benefit. Not you alone benefiting from me. You get it. That is the main reason why Facebook wants to rebrand. You see, he's changed his name to Meta. I don't know if you know Facebook has rebranded. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Meta. Uh -huh. Because if he doesn't rebrand to Meta to make people feel that, no, I'm also going to Web3 so that you'll be safe. Because if not, people, you know, he wants to take his, the version of Facebook to, in Web2 to Web3. You get it. To make you, to make, before people will understand all these back end things, what is happening? If you come to Web two, he's there with the Facebook. If you go to Web three, 
he's doing the meta. The meta, he's, 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 I mean, he's still building it anyway, but he's, he's actually named, rebranded the name. I mean, they don't call it, they call it meta or they still call it Facebook. They call it meta, oh, right? Officially, like, yes, it's meta. Ah, they call it meta now. So he's trying to, uh, how do you call it? He's trying to psych us, psych people's mind that, uh -huh. because he, I mean, he, he knows what is happening in technology. So if he doesn't get ahead first, you get before you you learn about all this or before you understand it you know that ah all this what they've been cheating us the website that we are going there to he said nami i meta so i'm also there <laughs> you get it uh -huh. that's how he's rebranded you know he's all of a sudden last year or this is this year all of a sudden from nowhere he, he said i meta mm -hmm. they all want to go there they all want to go there so that before people realize before people say jack oh, I'm also in Web3. So don't go for any other person. Me too, I'm here. Still come back to me. That is it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm coming. Any more questions or comments? Um, can I get some information on how to contact you or rather follow you? Oh, no problem. I'll put my LinkedIn. Okay, what, what, how do you want it? Apple, what do you me? What, mostly I write about articles there. So you can, if you get time, you can be reading about it. Okay. Oh, awesome. And, and what, what other link. contact? Yes, yes, yes. I'll, I'll put it. Um, I can see a conversation chat here. I'm putting, let me get it and put it in the chat right now so that I wouldn't forget. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. I, I, are you still in school? Pardon? Am I still in school? No, no, no. I'm only talking about school stuff. That's why I'm asking. Oh, no, I was just, I, I asked a general question. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I was, I was just asking. Just asking. Okay, that's fine. I'll put it there. Angie also has my, how do you call it? My my contact. So if you want to contact me via WhatsApp, Angie has that one, okay? But I'm just sending. Okay. And Pami, you can, if you don't mind, you can send your number as well. We have a, a WhatsApp page. So oh, okay. Yeah, I'm putting it in the chat now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank Welcome. You. Okay, thank you very much, ladies, for showing up. Like this has been really, really interesting. So um, we look forward to many more um, events. So this would um, be, I'll sh um, since we recorded it, I'll share it and then, um, we we'll try to, I'll, I'll place a request for it to be uploaded on, on, on YouTube so that we can always go back. Amazing. What's your YouTube channel, please? I think it's a seen. woman who could, a woman who could. Okay, thank you. Yes, let me just, um, let me just share the link in the chat and then we can end. Um, so apart from the ones that we have, because it's, it's part of a, it's a global network, you can access resources from other, from other, um, other chapters, from other women who code chapters. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So I'm just sharing that in the chat. Okay. Yes. Done. I share that. So this is like a general one, but I can share more specific ones for some of our events and um, for women who could acquire earlier this year. Okay. 
So thank you very much once again. I'd and then enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay. Okay. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.